In Afghanistan now, new video shows the moments Taliban fighters fired weapons into the air following a protest in Kabul. Shots rang out as the Taliban continued to crack down on opposition as a large group were reportedly protesting their capture of the Panjshir Valley, the country's last uncontrolled province. This comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meets with top diplomats in Qatar to thank them for helping transport thousands of Afghan evacuees after the Taliban took control. Charlie Daggett has more. They raged in Kabul again today, anti-Taliban protests that are growing in size and fury by the day. Heavy gunfire broke out, shots fired to disperse the crowds, sending people scrambling. The protesters include many women shouting freedom, other demonstrators yelling death to Pakistan for meddling in Afghanistan. Capita woman who took off the Taliban flag. Another demonstration held in the north of the country in support of women's rights. Each protest a bold gamble against a regime known for its extreme brutality. As the Taliban tightens its grip on power, the U.S. State Department says an American family of four was able to flee over land. But there's growing outrage over Americans and Afghans still stranded in the country. Satellite images show six evacuation planes at the Mazar Sharif airport amid accusations they've been grounded by the Taliban for nearly a week. Marina Legree is the founder of Ascend Athletics, a group helping Afghan women and girls trying to get out. The U.S. government has contacts with the Taliban. I mean, these are the same people we've been negotiating with for a very long time in Doha. Surely there's some outreach that could be done and some levers that could be pulled to release these people. So Charlie Daggett is joining us now from Doha with more. Charlie, first question for you. What can you tell us about the four Americans who were able to safely leave the country over land? They did not fly out. Yeah, well, it's great news as far as we understand, as far as it's been reported anyway, they're the four, first four Americans to leave the country after that airlift uh, stopped. They left uh, via Tajikistan, we're learning that today, and they were met by uh, State Department representatives who said they are all in good health. And really importantly here, they were not impeded by the Taliban. The Taliban knew that they were moving, knew they were Americans, knew they were going to um, this border, and they did not stand in their way. If anything, they facilitated. So that's a good sign. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken reiterated today that he has promises from the Taliban that they are not going to stop U.S. citizens or anybody else holding proper uh, documents, foreign nationals, Afghans with the right documentation from leaving the country. But are there Americans still stuck at the airport then, those Americans that were denied permission to leave? Yes. Uh, again, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who is here in Doha, said they're in touch with around 100 Americans who are still in Afghanistan who may want to leave. There may be more that are in Afghanistan who don't want to leave at this time. Among them, there are dozens maybe who are around Mazar Sharif. And we spoke to one of the aid workers you saw in that uh, in our story just then said, among their group, there are 19 Americans. So that's all she could account for. She said, but as far as she understands, there were first two aircraft that were there. Now there are six. And in terms of it being grounded, it seems to fall into a gray area because there have been, uh, people have been blaming the State Department for not facilitating uh, those aircraft, those charter planes from leaving Mazar Sharif, which is north of Kabul, it's not the Kabul airport, uh, to arrive here in Doha. The Taliban saying we're really not stopping them, but there are certain people without documentation there. So it's not entirely sure who is to blame for the, the grounding of those aircraft here in Doha, said they've got permission to land here. So hopefully it's, um, it's a problem, perhaps a diplomatic problem, perhaps a, a bureaucratic problem, perhaps it's a, a, some sort of relationship with the Taliban that needs to be resolved over the next few days in order to get those charter aircraft out of the country. But the State Department has made very clear, look, we no longer have access on the ground. We don't control the airspace. We can't tell the Taliban what to do. We discourage private aircraft like this from going in and out of Afghanistan. So really, the Taliban is holding all the cards. Mm. 
So is Secretary Blinken, he's in Doha, is he meeting with members of the Taliban? Or, or, and is it strictly, and if he is, uh, or if he isn't, but is it strictly the conversation about protecting Americans that are in Afghanistan, or could they be talking about other things as well? Well, you know, Anne-Marie, there are a slew of subjects that he, Antony Blinken, will be speaking about here in Doha. First of all, talking to the leadership here, because this country has been absolutely critical in the evacuation of tens of thousands of people. And in the short press conference that the Secretary of State held this morning, he said, we're in gratitude to the Qatari government for a number of reasons. 58,000 people came into this country from Afghanistan. Far and away, the largest number of people to have left. Among them, of course, many Americans. And you've seen the pictures yourself. We have been there at the Al Udaid uh, U.S. Air Base. So the Qatari government has facilitated that and essentially allowed all these flights, including giving some of their own aircraft, not just to get Afghan citizens and American citizens uh, safe travel here to Qatar, uh, but also from here to Ramstein in Germany and then also to the United States and other locations around the globe. So that has been critical. As far as meeting with the Taliban delegation, I think we have to rewind a little bit. You know, we always talk about the Doha talks in the beginning when President Trump's administration started these talks with the Taliban. It was right here. So the Qataris in Doha hosted those talks. So there is a Taliban diplomatic presence here in Qatar, here in Doha. As we understand it, there are no direct talks with the Taliban from the Secretary of State for all kinds of reasons, sensitive political reasons. Mm. Uh, but that doesn't mean there isn't communication through the Qataris in dealing from the United States through the Qataris to the Taliban. Um, so, as we know now, the Taliban have complete control of Afghanistan. The last province, holdout province, has fallen to them and it was with, is within their control. Do we know when they will be announcing any information about a new government? <laughs> That seems to be the, the big question. They, they're in control of the country, but clearly not in control of themselves or the government. As of the end of last week, they said, we're going to be announcing this new government within the next couple of days. That was from last Wednesday. Then we were thinking, well, Friday prayers, that might be a good time to do it. And that's what we were hearing. Al Jazeera was porting, reporting it. Our partners at Al Jazeera were reporting it themselves. That's what we were expecting. Then maybe it was Saturday. Then it rolled over to sort of midweek. Well, here we are, and there hasn't been any announcement. In fact, if anything, they're kind of taking back those expectations. Partly, as we understand it, is because there is a rivalry between the Taliban in the south, those who come from Kandahar and Helmand, which has been, you know, a pocket uh, of support for the Taliban. They feel that they have, should have a slice of the pie. In the north, in the east, you have the Haqqani Network, which is supported by Pakistan. We had the head of the ISI, which is the Pakistani Intelligence Agency, who are now involved in those negotiations. So there seems to be a job of position. Remember that many, many Taliban fighters, you know, fought and died in order to get to this moment. They feel that they have ownership of this new Afghanistan. They have differing views on how it should be run. You have the more conservative who say it should be run by Sharia law. Then you have the more moderates who are saying, okay, great, but we need to get along with the national international community, which means we have to support, to a degree, women's rights, or at least make it appear that way. There are funds that are being frozen. So there are the pragmatists within the new Afghan government, as it's coming together, who are saying, we need to be recognized on a global scale. And they have the other more conservatives saying, wait a minute, we've been fighting for 25 years for this moment, and the moment that we're looking for is to impose the law under Islam uh, that we've been fighting for. So that, as we understand it, if I had to understand what's going on, that's what I would speculate. Mm, so, uh, well, you know, you were talking about their funds being frozen, and we know that the, a new Afghan government is going to need a lot of assistance from, from other countries, whether it's unfreezing that money or additional aid. So, well, you know, we'll, we'll see. Charlie, thank you very much.